going to ban the Vox because, as you said, if they ban Kestrel or Baron, they're forced to either pick one or let one through. So they're thinking, okay, we won't ban either. Hopefully, maybe we're going to pick Kestrel ourselves so that we, can't, we don't let them have it. I don't think they should pick Baron. They've seen that Baron can get countered. They just got countered in the last game, so it wouldn't make sense for them to pick Baron first. Yeah, they probably want to pick Grace or Lyra. Just get one of the healers and then try and ban away one of them. <laughs> no, they're going to go for the Baron again. They seem to believe that he's strong enough. Maybe they thought, okay, we, we let them snowball the early game last game. We don't do that again this game. We still have a chance. Yeah. yeah I think Lyra or Grace would just be picked up. Probably Lyra. I think that is rather sound mentality, but of course, Infamous will not fall back onto their comp like that of the previous game. And it's gonna give us that Idris um, to comment Yay. about. We've not seen uh, Idris a lot um, for, for this entire week at least. Um, it's either banned out or never picked at all. I mean, Idris is one of the strong carries at this point in time. So both healers are banned out for both teams. We have. Grey is being banned out for the side of Infamous and of course in response to that, the Lyra being banned out. Yeah, yeah if one healer's banned, you generally want to ban the other one. Adagio, even though he's a healer, just isn't on the same level as Grace and Lyra uh, at the moment. So I think they're probably going to go Catherine to counter the Baron. They're actually going to go straight for Kestrel. They're going Comfort pick Kestrel, counter pick Idris. This is a really strong combination. We don't, we've seen how strong Kestrel is. We know how strong Idris is, against, especially against someone like Baron. So, obviously, Catherine is thick for um, Enix there. It counters Kestrel, it stops them countering Baron with it, and it's quite good into Idris. So, I'd be very surprised if they go anything else. Because if they, if they go a different cut, maybe they go Arden Rome to pair with the Baron, they give away Catherine to counter Rome Baron. So, it's just, it would be such a good pick. But again, they might go for someone like a. Batiste is really good into Idris. Can't work into Crystal Kestrel. If you ordained Crystal Kestrel, then she, you know exactly where she is. And they're going to go for the Koshka. Yeah, Baron Koshka is a combination that works well. Uh, the early game of Koshka offsets the weak early game of Baron. And they're going to go for Arden. I'd expect to see either oh, Batiste, actually. Batiste, Rome Batiste would be fantastic against this Koshka. But they could go Kestrel to try and counter the Baron as well. So they could go Catherine to try and counter the Baron. Yep, I personally would favour that Batiste. And then we do see almost perfect team comp, team comp coming out from the side of Infamous yet again. I, I personally call Infamous the, the, the draft kings in Southeast Asia mm. because, they, they, because their hero pool is so fast. They can yeah, basically yeah. play around with a lot of heroes. I mean, even if now they would like to run the Crystal Idris with a weapon Castro, they probably could. But anyways, yeah. we are into the second match of the finals between Enix and Infamous. Enix, um, of course, Infamous taking that first match. And this is just up to Enix on how to play and execute their team comp with that of Baron, Koshka and Arden. And of course, on the side of Infamous, we do see that Idris for the first time this split um this week and of course that batiste on rome and in response in the jungle for that crystal carry would be that of castro so i'm really looking forward to to what you know how this game would pan out because we know koshka is a really good early game yeah i'm um, going up against this castro what do you think would happen i think Kestrel will be able to get farm really <coughs> quickly that's one of Kestrel's crystal Kestrel especially is strong points is that she can farm really quickly obviously you lose energy um, but use energy quickly, but you can clear your jungle, port home, come back and clear your jungle again, and try and just not fight Koshka. Yeah. So Kestrel will be able to offset the early game of Koshka, but then again, a really good Koshka will just be able to kill you or take your farm no matter what you do. And so, obviously Koshka can starve the Kestrel out in lane, or if she can't starve Kestrel out, can rotate it out to lane and starve Idris out, And so because Batiste is a good captain at countering Koshka. Yeah. Okay, you might have broken off there. So, like, like I do agree with you. Barrier Ooh. or health or anything like that. Uh huh. Um, I, I need production to actually give me the word whether or not a minimizer has been breaking up um, so very often. So, in case it's just on my end, I would not interrupt him uh, midway talk and interrupting the stream. Um, overall, um, so can I have a word on that, please? But anyways, I do agree with you. I like Koshka. We do see now is babysit, uh, babysitted by Rubber Monkey. Ooh, they are going in for you. 
Uh, I, I'm not in the game at the moment. Oh, you're not in the game at the moment. Okay, it's fine. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna talk about the game. Um, I agree with that. I actually scored first blood. Um, going up against Uni on that Crystal Castro. So like you said, and I do understand um, where you're coming from when you do actually say um, Koshka is going to get a farm no matter what. Koshka is still living in the jungle. Castro got rooted. I agree with that. Is second really low? Uni is uh, second blood for the side oh. of Enix. There you go. I'm back. I'm in. And Welcome okay, back. waiting in the bush. And yeah, I just didn't load into the game for some reason. I was stuck. But I agree with doing well. Already getting that gold lead, getting 10 CS to Kestrel's 5, and obviously um, I think you die with a full jungle rotation for him still to clear. Baron should know that Kestrel's going to rotate to left lane. But if you take the enemy jungle, they're going to come to lane. So Choppy's smart, he's staying back, but there's a Kestrel at the top, and that's going to be a glimmer shot. That's a dead Choppy, he's going to get stunned up. And there's the Shatra, just to make sure. So Choppy's, he tried to stay back, but he didn't stay in the right position to get away from Kestrel. Maybe Arjun should have come up to lane to help. Iron Gudai are going to go to lane to try and get a gang onto Idris, but Kestrel's going to port home, and Iron Gudai and Rubber Monkey straight to the backs will get them without Kestrel being there. I don't think he should go for the mid, I think they're for the heal. But I think Iron Gudai should just take the backs, run away, let Kestrel take the mid herself, and then you can probably, yeah, smart, and then Iron Gudai can probably take Kestrel's mid, and now that it spawns, and Kestrel just took the back tree, and that's all she's going to get off her jungle before Iron Gudai rotates back, and probably wants to fight again, obviously. We saw Truffies go into Koshka's jungle just to secure that, to make sure that Koshka doesn't have to waste time going to her own jungle, could just live in Kestrels and deny farm away from there. Well, yeah, definitely. I do agree with you. And, and there's one thing that I must say. Um, I agree with that. His, his rotation, he's allowing trophies um, on this Baron to actually just go to his bags and then just picking up the, the, the farm. And, ooh, just so looking at me. Okay, just about Shakram gonna not quite finish him off. He wants one glimmer shot, and it's not quite enough. He needs another one. Good dodge from Baron on the glimmer shot to keep himself alive. Iron Gu die. He's rotating in lane. He knows his death drop is gonna pick up this farm, and Kestrel's backs are up. Iron Gu die's not there. He's gonna be distraught, only being able to farm his own jungle. And Baron should just—he's trying to clear, he's gonna clear. He's gonna try and clear the wave. He should just port home, get yourself some health. It's worse if you die. But he's actually going to be able to force Idris to boots away. So he will be fine. He'll get this farm and then he will definitely pull home. So that he doesn't fall to this Kestrel. In fact, he's going to go help Kosh clear a jungle. So Baron decided that he, he, he can get health from this tree and, and then he can just run it back up to lane. Well, yeah. I, I mean, this this is a time where the Crystal Sentry do come out and that would kind of stop Koshka from invading a little too much. This is the time that Uni has been waiting for. Just to farm up a little bit more before going up to lane to try to get our uh, trophies again because we know Crystal Castro, it requires a lot of items to kind of work as compared to that Koshka. I agree with that on that Koshka has already gotten that shattered glass. So just um, just imagine the amount of damage coming out and I agree with that, may find Uni. Uni is going to be caught out. He's trying to get a a couple glimmer shots, but you cannot ignore that sentry. Uni's backing off smartly to the sentry. Rubber Monkey's now caught out. It's down. There's going to be a dead Rubber Monkey. Crush is going to get the back, so that was smart. You know Arden Yard is going to die. You're not going to get a kill. Just take the back. That was actually a minion cannon used on the crystal sentry. The first time I've seen that for ages. It's a brilliant idea, but you generally don't have a chance to actually minion candy in the crystal sentry, because if you fight around sentry, you don't normally have a minion candy available. So yeah. that did help secure the kill on Arden. It's more than worth it. I love to see Shatterglass first on Koshka against this specific comp. Against the Kestrel, you just want to burst her down immediately. You don't need an aftershock. And so I think that's a smart decision. And Koshka doesn't know where Uni is. SNK is going to rotate down. And Idris has now picked up that Sora Blade. So that's very important. He can blink away from Baron or blink on top of Koshka. And so that means Idris will be um, a bad pick up a Sora Blade as well. So even on damage. And two fountains. Just to, just to, everyone's all nice and even on their damage items. Except for Kestrel. Because... Koshka's starved. Koshka has double Kestrel CS at the moment. Yeah, I really mean... Big, um, important to Koshka. Yeah, I mean, Koshka is sitting at 34 farm as compared to Kestrel's 19. It was 15 before that. Um, so, uh, oh, honestly... Yeah, we can get Benzi used onto the Batiste. I was as well, and that SNK falling just the mountain on itself, but it wasn't enough. I argued you know, I just waiting in the bush, waiting for whoever would walk in, and they were just going to kill him. So that's forget he's going to rotate the lane. He will blink towards the minions, try and clear them as quickly as possible. Watch out, one kill landing on the trophies. Don't forget he's going to go on to the kill. He's just going to go for the turret. 
and yeah, he's low, the Dragon Ball Contact seems on him, he's going to have to Shimmer Strike defensively for Uni, and that is a turret going down to Enix, and this is uh, Udai going to try and get away, but there's an uphill day for the piece, he's going to try and dodge Shimmer Shots, but he's going straight in, the Phantom is using so much damage onto that Kestrel, I agree Udai, Saturn stepping like a beast, to get a basic attack off, use his A, get another one off, bow with a, with a basic attack, and Kestrel just got deleted. Deleted indeed. I, I, I personally think that the team can come out from the side of Enix. This Koshka is putting in so much work for trophies on this Baron to farm up for the late game, and it's working out for them. I mean, oh. So I guess he's going to die with his trophies, and he will get the kill, but I knew you die. It's very angry. No, he's not actually going to get a kill. I guess he's very low, but where's he going to go? He's got to go either towards Koshka or towards Sentry. He's going towards Koshka, but Koshka's gone up to the turrets instead. So Spaghetti will be able to get away. One shot, one kill on the turret, just to try and poke that down. That was a good engage from Spaghetti. He knew he could get the kill onto uh, Barrel with that infusion, but didn't quite get Koshka, but did manage to get away with his life. So that'll be good for good for Spaghetti. He can, he can farm himself up a little bit and just try and get towards the late game where Koshka starts falling off and it becomes more of a 2v1 with Koshka just there as a, as a reflex block bait. Well, yeah, definitely. But then we are going to see this Koshka building into um, that of Shattered Glass following up um, that um, Broken Myth. So... It's fine, uh, it's fine. Okay, so even now, you, you may say Koshka is losing out damage in the late game as compared to the other carries, but then we are looking at Uni right now, just sitting only at the first tier 3 items, when Koshka has got, you know, is going to build into the Broken Myth very soon. And also with a Reflex block already on Koshka, whereas on Uni, just sitting on 27 Pathetic CS. Well, that's going to go straight up to Uni. And... I don't know if to talk about it. Okay, so Uni has been taken low. Spaghetti is trying to 1v1. I agree with that. One shot, one kills come out, but sadly misses. Fatis in this game is not putting in a lot of work. I mean, granted, Fatis is. Oh, Trophies do jump jets in to collect and pick up that of Uni jump jet again, picking up SNK. And that is a double kill going for Fatis and the first ace of the game, nine minutes in. So oh, that's we, extremely good. Turn around ace is that against the Koshka? Wait, no, it, it is the side of um, <laughs> uh, Enix oh, that got that got ace. No, 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 got not, no, no, but he's not get the double kill. Trophies get the double kill. Oh, I <laughs> yeah, no worries. So, are you back in game right now? I'm loading back into the game. So oh, okay, I'm, awesome. Like, that's really good for I'm going to die. Just 3 and 0, and Trophies now 4 and 2. They're really pushing this early game advantage. And, and it's, it's, it's much better than, um, than we both expected. We both expected the Quinton to be too casual um, and the Batista just counted this Koshka so hard. Although well, I die, not quite going to take that one shot. Rough Monkey tanked it well for him. And now Uni is going to be spotted out by a flare, but he's just going to land that camera trap down and just wait for someone to engage and then land that stun. That's all he needs to do, just wait for Koshka to jump in, land the stun. Oh. He has got a block, so the Yummy Cat Defense would start up Uni with no option to block it. Batista's going for Echo second, I think. I think that uh, Void Battery's going to be able to do an Echo before he gets anything else, which is a good uh, idea. You don't, you don't use that much more sensitive kind of point that Kestrel's going to get away. She doesn't want to do it. She needs the visibility to get away. Uh, yeah, that's, that's smart from SNK. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, we did see the amount of damage Truffies, uh, Truffies actually output on this SNK on this Batiste. And no doubt it is a Rome Batiste, but, and, and no doubt it's a Batiste, but he is on the roaming roll. He just picked up the tier one armor for um, for himself. And, and we saw just one basic attack, uh, oh, sorry, two basic attack empowered ones after jump jets coming out from Truffies actually took SNK down to half health. So it may seem like the side of Infamous got it all together for this game with that Idris pickup and that um, uh, ooh, Ion Cannon okay, drop. Okay, put up by a flare. And that's going to be more than a Uni going far too aggressive. Though. So Mr. SNK going to get Yummy Cannon Frenzy stunned. Trophy's just going to get it far. Now he's jumped into the game. That's because he's got a lovely bit of shade. Mr. Webber, it's balanced. Still got the double shot. Spaghetti's going to greedy port. He will get home. No one can stop him there. But this will be the turret going to Enix. That was Kestrel 
going a little bit too far. There was a scout trap, well placed by Rob Blunkin, and Truffy is going to jump jets around that shack and pick up the turret. Batista, as I say, getting an echo second dive, so it makes sense against this cop. One shot onto Iron Glue Die, he'll just get the tree in and be fine. I guess he wants more. I don't think he should really try it. He's one versus three. He's going to go to the lane. Koshka going to happily farm up her jungle, work towards that broken myth while Kestrel is sitting on where Koshka was about five, five minutes ago. Uh -huh. yep, I must agree with you that Koshka is just doing that early game invade. Really hurt the Team Com coming up from the side of Infamous because they, no doubt they have a very strong, very dynamic, um, um, a lot of um, damage they can throw out onto the side of Phoenix. It is just the constant invades wasn't helped out by the fact that SNK was never in the jungle babysitting um, this uh, Kestrel. Um, and then what uh, I agree with I did was just leave in um, uh, Kestrel's uh, jungle even um, till the fourth minute mark, and and that kind of hurt. Just just look at his CS, right? He has 41 CS as compared to Angry Udai's close to 60 CS. Go difference wise, a lot of invades played a big part as well. A nine to three kills, we've seen this kind of scores before, yeah, where the team has got deficit kills, but then the goal difference is kind of even out. But just looking at the objective difference, yeah, and the goal difference, um, the side of Enix has got 5k gold on top of Infamous and has got two turret advantage as well. Um, honestly, looking to this match, I, I just really think that the side of Infamous should start turtling up. Um, and, and stop looking for fights because uh, although uh, they, they need to push it to the late game granted Baron is really strong in the late game but then Castro just do not have the items the necessary items required and the gold required to just outplay the side of Enix as a Crystal Castro a lot of your a lot of your plays a lot of the team fights will be you knowing and understanding to outplay your teammates because active camo is part of the kit and it's very important part of kit glimmer shots it's not just the only thing you should do and so you know you do not have the goal to outplay your enemies and that is one of the big problems uh coming to this game as a castro as a crystal castro granted uh, spaghetti in the late game can probably hard carry very very hard uh, if i agree you die goes down then spaghetti might have a chance yeah the important thing to know is trophies already has 13 minutes in he has four completed damage items so i'll pay attention by double tyrants he will be hitting like a truck on anyone if you only gets hit he gets spotted out by um, a flare and Truffy's double shots and then he's a basic attack and the power base attack from koshka and you will just fall immediately and i think it's, it's basically it's koshka's job at the moment to stop infamous turtling up to stop to not let them get to the late game when um, Kestrel will start uh, being even on damage with Koska and eventually out damage with Koska. Once oh. on Truffies, that's going to do a lot of damage, but he'll get the health regeneration, natural health regeneration, and probably pick up a mid tree and when, uh, when, when it spawns, but not yet. And actually, going to push the turret with that. Infamous, taking the turret. Oh, that's the lovely arm cannon. It's not quite getting unique. And he's going to block up your. Lock up. Oh. Turn it around. Shut down onto Koska. He really picked that one up. No, he's going to go to one monkey. That's the shimmer strike. He's going to pick up the kill. That's Idris. That's the power of late game Idris. He can get a double kill, even though they're behind. And that gold deficit they're under is going away very quickly. Back to the uni. And there's maybe a target. They're just going to back off, get the mid, and got Posture possibly to take this crack. One shot. Just going trophies that you got my defense on me, or I'm going to kill you. And they're actually yeah. going to take the Kraken, they know no one's going to steal it, so that's a food. Double kill with Kraken for Infamous, they've turned it around so quickly. They have indeed, I mean, I mean this is almost similar to the game they had with Impunity, when they had a comeback. And like I said earlier on, Castro, you need to be ahead in goal to, to have those outplay moments. But Uni are once again proving me wrong that I don't need much gold. It's just down to skill. If you want me to outplay, fine, I'll outplay without enough gold. There you go, in your face, Luxury. And that was what he did. He outplayed that Koshka, blocking out the yummy cat nip and frenzy. Oh, spaghetti is taken really, really low. Yeah, it's taken very low. One shot, one kill, and buff one key this time. And Kestrel's got two damage items, Koshka only has one. So Kestrel's, even though she hasn't got anywhere near as much defense as Koshka does, Kestrel's got to the point where she out damages Koshka now. So he's gonna jump in, he's gonna try and get off the point. Now, good gauntlet, trapping out Kestrel. They know 
in the subway, stuff the corner, but it won't be anything. Kestrel just stick it in the middle of those two corners. And now, as you can stand up, you can stand up, but IQ dies very low, gonna die to the SE one shot, could be enough for basic attack. Good um, ordained from SNK to stick, keep Kostrel oh. place, double kill. Traded over, Idris got one, Barrett got one, they killed each other, and this Kraken will get a second turret, the dude's gonna back off far too low, can't even afford to glimmer shot. Now he can, that will finish off the turret. And that will be a good push for Infamous. And they've already basically negated the gold lead that they've lost. But once Rough Monkey eventually takes down this Kraken, that will still the gold will still be in um, Enix's favour. Yeah. It will still be they'll still be ahead. But I'm sure Yudi will be more than happy that he's got his two damage items. Koshka has one, and so he can just easily out damage his Koshka. Ooh, just... Koshka has no defense as well. One more hit on that turret, and that turret, that turret would have fallen. Uh, we do see a comeback coming up from the side of Infamous. I mean, Uni on this Castro in the late game after acquiring like all of his items needed, uh, all of his items needed. He is just a beast. I mean, not discounting the fact that Spaghetti is putting in a lot of work as well, um, coming into a lot of the team fights. Ooh, Castro might be caught out right now by a scout trap. Castro will be fine as he's just able to back away. But to be fair, um, Spaghetti has taken every single kill that, um, in, that <laughs> Infamous have got. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. He just has got all seven. And yeah. Kestrel and the SNK are just like, nah, you can have them. You're fully built, just have another kill. We don't need kills. <laughs> Gold lead, again, it's nothing. It's about, what, one and a half K now? Yeah. So, um, I think Uni is going to be ridiculously happy with how they just they have one good team fight and they basically just turned it all around. Definitely, I mean the crack and take uh, pickup was so crucial for the side of Infamous. Being able to push that single lane turret into cracking the base open and left the base turret, one of the crystal turret, just one hit away. It is definitely very important that um, that Kraken, especially that fight that happened around Kraken when Spaghetti traded his life for that of Trophies, it was equally important as well. They are posturing in for a fight right now. Trophies had a had his slumbering husk but got popped really early on. Spaghetti just went in, saw the husk was popped, another fear. Bombardier used to that echo. That's really good. Um, really good play from him. Although SNK is very low. He um, can get one more soul fragment, but that's it for healing. So he's going to back off both teams. So he's just to back away. And that's the one shot onto Trophies. And yeah, well, we had a frenzy. Actually, onto uh, Spaghetti. Spaghetti's going to go low. Not actually going to go low. I think he does. He does. He's about to oh. Double kill for him. He's got double damage in that strike. Can yes, he can. He's going to get the triple. Yes, he can. <laughs> Ten kills for him. 10 kills for Infamous, that is the ace, and I don't see Enix being be able to be spawned before Infamous get the kills. So I guess he won't quite be a nightmare, but he will be 10 and 0, 10 kills just to forget it. Well, yeah, I mean, you're fully built, but like you said, I don't care. You are going to collect the kills because you are the OP one in the game. This is the final match between the finals match between Enix and Infamous. Enix was looking really strong um, at first, um, just constantly invading and starving out that Castro, that uni on Castro in the early game. But it didn't quite pay out because they neglected Spaghetti in lane, allowed Spaghetti to pick up two early kills on that Baron trophies and allowed Spaghetti to just farm up into the late game, completing all the items necessary for him to deal out damage and then, of course, taking out trophies. What do you think ENX or the side of ENX could have done better following that early game aggression? How they could have snowballed into the late game? Because we are seeing.